I am joined in by the Rajya Sabha MP, Mr. W. R. Karluki, who is also the NPP State President. We are going to talk to him about the recent political development and how the NPP is growing from strength to strength, not only in the state, but in several states across the Northeast. So, Ba, do you see the NPP wave in our state? Well, seeing that the party we are building it up, the party is growing. But at this uh, stage, it's too early to say that it's a wave. Because I do believe that you will really find the wave only after the election results. If it is uh, you know, if it is an absolute majority, then it's a wave. But if it's just like any other result in the election, it is not a wave. So I don't see that there's a wave. But yes, the party is picking up. We are building up the party. And we are preparing ourselves for the 2023 election. Okay, so the reported disintegration of the Congress party with the joining of the five remaining Congress MLAs with the MDA. Do you see this as a positive uh, you know, development for the NPP? No, the thing is actually the they were still Congress MLA, though of course they were suspended. They have just joined the MDA to be part of the you know part of the coalition government and I really I thanks them for the they join us because they appreciate the work that was done by MDA and I think that at least we have tried our level best to do the best for our people and issues which were for years it was not uh, it was not solved we are trying to solve it so maybe for this reason they are joining the MDA but to say that they are joining the NPP no not yet so have they shown any kind of a, they have they shown any inclination or keenness to join the ruling party no the thing is i think you have seen in the paper they said we are joining mda they're part of the coalition they have not said that they're going to join either npp or either any other party so with the congress out of the picture because now it's in the ruling party uh, do you consider the aitc uh, a threat well like i've said every now and then AITC is still to be tested. AITC, who, who are AITC? They are Congress people who left their party and joined the AITC. And to say there's a threat, I don't believe because if they are really a threat, they should have the courage to resign from their seat and contest in AITC. But, you know, joining from Congress to AITC, to say that they're a threat, let us see in 2023. And so there's been allegations from uh, several quarters regarding the, you know, the NPP devouring its own uh, coalition partners. Do you think, uh, what is your reaction to that? Well, we are not cannibals, okay. So I don't know that in politics there's cannibalism, but those people, that is only a political ploy. You know, what they're trying to do, they're realizing that, you know, they're losing some of their members, especially I think it's a big loss for the AITC, a MDC from the constituency of the, we say the strongest whole of the AITC in Garo Hills, leaving the AITC, that is a very very dangerous trend for them. So it's quite natural that it should come up from them in that way, that we are devouring. No, no, I'm so sorry, we are not cannibal. And so, um, your coalition partners like the UDP and the BJP had stated that they were not consulted when uh, the, gov the MDA decided to, you know, welcome the, uh, the five suspended Congress MLAs to the MDA. Well, you see, I don't know about that. But to me, if you read in the papers, I always take a stand that we welcome everyone, even AITC. We welcome them if they come. What is there? To have a, you see, like in Nagaland. No more uh, opposition party. Everybody is in the ruling. So together we can work better, I think, for the state. And uh, sir, recently the chief minister had stated that, you know, uh, they are in contact with many AITC leaders. Do you see this um, as a, like previously I mentioned, a, de a positive development to the party, uh, especially in the run-up to the 2023 elections? You see, the biggest positive development for the party is that what I've just mentioned earlier. An MDC who is the right hand man of Dr. Mukul for so long, leaving Dr. Mukul, that is a dangerous, uh, I'll not say a trend, that is a danger for the AITC. 
So coming back, uh, if we shift uh, towards the uh, issues that the state is facing, we know that there have been a lot of allegations against the ruling party and the MDA coalition on the issue of coal mining. How do you respond to that, sir? You see, I'm very clear. It came out in the Shilong Times itself that I am from that part of Giant Hills. And like I've said earlier, nobody can stop coal mining. Why? Because I said I have grown up there right from my younger age. I have, I have seen how are people in those days where there is no coal that they have to sweat it out. Most of the roads in, I think in, in here in Kasi and Giant Hills were built by those people as daily laborers from this coal area. They went throughout Kasi Giant Hills to earn their livelihood. It is only with the coming of coal that, you know, there's the, I may say, the economic, uh, the shift in the economy or the shift in the, in, you know, the economic thing of Meghalaya to the coal belt area. And again and again, I'm telling that they look at our people when we are with the coal, we are rich now. Have they ever asked a question? Why those so same coal baron, which they said, they, they, those people, they don't even know maybe the meaning of coal baron or coal mafia, whatever they call them. They don't even know because they could not afford to go to school. They were uneducated. At the time when I was in my eight years, nine years old, I was just lucky, but I was in the town. My father is a government contractor. My mother is working. And I saw they could not, they could not go to school. Where, where were they? They were walking like cow herds in the house of people, especially in the town of Juai. Because why? Because their parents were very poor. So now, you see, it is very easy. I said earlier, it is very easy to pass a law. But the only thing is, even those passing a law, they are to be blamed. You should think of how will these people survive? They need to survive. You make a law, yes, environment, okay. But do you mean to say that Yes, we protect the environment and let those people die. They should also have the concern to see that, yes, the law, our people, they are agreeable to any law, but at least give them a chance to survive also. Uh, so apart from the economic activity uh, activities and the benefits that it brings to the people especially the poor people now we see that you know like it had been it had surfaced earlier that there is a nexus between you know illegal coal mining and the uh, mafia uh, and the militancy in the west Coast hills uh, would you say you know uh, this would encourage militants to come up again or militancy to raise its ugly head again in the state you see today itself who, who is the person best known about this? It is the police. And I think the acting DGP came out today. They could not find out. Though Dr. Mukul has found out. Why don't he, f he f if he had found out that those, give the name of those militants that he found that they are op operating there. You know, this uh, just giving statement in the press, it is only a political gimmick. You know, you can blame anyone and anybody. But you have to bring your proof. Leader opposition, responsible leader. Okay? Here, find out. Name those people. Give it to the police. Today, the acting DGP, she herself said, no. They could not, it was not there. They have, they, they have shown that how they have tackled insurgency. And I'll tell you, I'm proud that at least the police in Meghalaya, they are the best police. That they themselves handle militancy in Meghalaya. We don't have, we don't need the army. So that itself, we should give credit to the police. We should not demoralize the police. Well, if you have evidence, bring it out. Time and again, I have been telling these people, you bring out your evidence. Show, file an FIR. Nobody can stop you. But don't just make it political thing, no? Give it. So uh, coming back to politics, um, if we talk about the 2023 general elections, how determined are you to serve uh, to say that the NPP will be able to gain absolute majority? You see, I don't believe in saying that we'll gain absolute majority, but what I believe is that, that we work hard to see that we gain either absolute majority or we are again back in the government with our coalition partners. So are you determined that the NPP will come back to power, be it on its own or with the help of other parties? Yes, that is the target of not only 
the NPP, I think even AITC, even Congress, even N even UDP, every party, that is their target to come back to power. So there we've heard it from the Raja Sabha MP and the state uh, NPP state uh, party president, Pa W R Karluki, on the uh, development and political development in the state. And what he felt is the that the 2023 general elections in the state of Meghalaya will be an interesting uh, elections as uh, many parties will be vying for the seat of power. This is Ivan Maori for the Shillong Times.